Hey, Filipina Reefer, thanks for joining early. Taylor and Mikey Mike Mike, thanks for joining. <laughs> Just let me know in the comments if you can hear me all good um, before I start properly. I feel like there's always a slight delay at the beginning of live streams. Um, but yeah, let me know. You can hear me all right in the comments. And yes, Mikey, are you going to go to reef stock? That's the question. <laughs> Thanks for joining, Mikey. Oh, can you hear me? All good. Awesome. Well, hello, everyone. And I'm actually really sorry because I just realized about an hour ago that it's actually Father's Day over in the UK and the US. So a very, very big uh, happy Father's Day to all of you dads out there so uh yeah I actually had no idea and I looked it up because I had a mild panic attack that I'd completely forgotten that it was Father's Day here in Australia but uh it's not so phew. but yeah because I, I was looking through Instagram and everyone's going happy Father's Day and I was like oh, oh but it looks like Australia is one of the only places we just have to be different don't we most of you guys have it today but ours is like the first I think it's the first weekend in September so yeah had a mild panic attack about an hour ago when I realized it was Father's Day so huge happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there hope you're all getting spoiled breakfast in bed and the whole lot so um yeah and if you got anything fishy related for Father's Day let me know um yeah what and you know if you did get something good let us know what you got in the comments what you got for father's day um but yeah sorry so i might have to make this one a bit of a short one because i absolutely had no idea it was father's day <laughs> over in other parts of the world so my apologies on that i really should do my um homework before just planning these um but Raphael, how are you going thanks for joining i'll just make sure i catch all these Hey, Mike, how are you going? Simon, thanks for joining from Melbourne. Must be about 11, 11 p.m. over there. Um, Filipino reefer again. Paris from Greece. How's it going? I don't know what time it would be over there. <laughs> hey, Remy, how's it going? Thanks for joining. Hey, UKM from the UK, thanks for joining. Hey Mel, aloha, <laughs> thanks for joining. And happy Father's Day to all the dads that have joined. I hope you're all getting spoilt. And you got a holy grail torch for Father's Day. That is awesome. That's very good. I hope everyone got something fishy or coral or something fish related for Father's Day. Hey, Jim, thanks for joining. Happy Father's Day. Um, let me just try and catch up. Hey, Saw from the Netherlands. How are you going? <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining. <laughs> hey, Justin. Oops, I just did something with the comments. Let me scroll back down. Awesome. And you got a really nice koi for Father's Day. That's awesome. That's very, very cool. That's something with getting koi fish now. I'm definitely, I know that's going to be on some of my birthday wish lists and stuff like that, um, or Christmas lists are definitely some nice, nice different types of koi because I can see that's going to be super addictive and wanting to get so many different types. So yeah, that's awesome. Love it. Yeah. Huge happy Father's Day to all the dads. So yeah. And um, if you just joined, I only just realized it was Father's Day over in the US and the UK. So yeah, huge happy Father's Day to you guys and hope you're all getting super spoiled and yeah, all deserve it to be having um, a very special day today. So thank you for joining. <laughs> and sorry, I probably should have changed it to a non-Father's Day <laughs> day. But, yeah, um, let me just start the check. How's it going? Let's talk about the water box. Yes, well, I was going to talk about the water box. So 
Um, yeah, it's going all right. Um, I think in the last live stream I said about the SBS not doing too well. So, um, yeah, that's, I don't know. I, I The more I think about it, the, the more I... I feel like I put the more effort I feel like I put into that tank, the worse it gets. The, the times that I don't do much at all with it, the better it is, honestly. So I think maybe I just really need to go back to basics on that tank and, um, you know, even just going back to water changes, I'm good at those. <laughs> just I feel like the more I think about it, the more I try and, I don't know. So, yeah, I... Um, yeah, just for a while, especially because I started that tank on dry rock as well. Um, I think I totally underestimated how long it can take for dry rock to really establish in a tank and to um, get, you know, up and running. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to – I've got some Zoes. I'm actually going up to Geraldton um, it, uh, next week, I think it is. Um, yeah, not this week, next week. And um, there's – somewhere up there that has some really cool um, zoas and stuff like that. So I might accidentally add to my zoa garden that I've got going <laughs> already. Um, but, yeah, it's going really well. Um, my Bangai Cardinals, uh, two of them actually seem to have paired off. So I, um, yeah, and one of them was just hanging out in the corner of the tank all the time and it looked really dark. Um, it didn't have any sign of sickness and all the other fish are completely fine. But it really just seemed like it wasn't loving life in that tank. So I, um, yeah, and the other two st were sticking together like a pair and I'm like, maybe they've paired off, but I couldn't see any, you know, how everyone says they'll just pick each other off one by one and you'll end up with none left. Um, but I couldn't see any aggression. Anytime I watched the tank, there was never any sign of aggression. Um, so I'm not sure if it was happening at night or something and it was getting bullied. So I actually ended up popping that odd one out back into, well, not back into, but into the six foot tank. So, um, and he's adjusting, or he or she is adjusting to life in the six foot now. Um, but yeah, that would be really, really cool if I've gotten a pair. I don't know, but they've just, they're sticking together and um, that other one was kind of the odd one out. So not sure if I made the right choice there, but it honestly was not loving life in that tank. So, um, but that would be very, very cool if I've ended up with a pair of Bangar Cardinals because, um, yeah, I've always said I'd love to breed them. So we never know. We'll see what happens. Um, so, yeah, that's, I guess, probably the biggest news with the water box. I did turn off the skimmer as well. Um, so, yeah. I'm just going to go back to doing 10% water water changes per week and see see how we go. So I don't know. I'm really going to try and keep things as basic as possible. I've stopped dow um, I've stopped dosing anything and um, yeah, because I've just got the just got the zoas at the moment moment. So at the moment, <laughs> so yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the latest with the water box. Um, so fingers crossed I've got a little bangai pair there and, uh, yeah, all the other fish are still, well, I've got my um, flame hawk fish and the um, neon dotty back and I'm going to forget all the names. <laughs> but the, oh, the lawnmower blurry, blenny as well, they're all doing really well. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the latest with the water box. I'll just make sure I'm, yeah. But to answer your question, that's that's how we're going there. Hello, Montha. Thanks for joining. And the big tank with the canister filter. Yes. So um, I just upgraded the uh, two ca the, the canister filters on the six foot to two of uh, the CJ Whale canister filters. So um, they're doing really well. Um, and yeah, we're super easy to put together. So. Really, really stoked with those. So, yeah, they're doing really well with that. Um, got a really decent, decent amount of flow as well on those. So um, I actually can't remember off the top of my head how um, how strong they were or how many gallons per hour is what I'm trying to say. They, uh, they did compared to what I used to have, but it seems to be a lot stronger. So um, that's, a, that's a positive. So, yeah. Um, Hello, Joe from Long Island. There you go. 
Hello, Jean. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Can't wait to hear you butcher some koi names. That's it. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Awesome. All right, let me just try and catch up on these comments. Sorry, I'm really bad at multitasking. <laughs> I'm supposed to be good at that, but not. <laughs> so please um, excuse me while I try and read and talk at the same time. Bing. Oh, do I? Do you have a firm like biota over there? I'm actually not sure what that means. Um, being into tank break fish. I'm actually not sure, sorry. Um, does that mean if I uh, if I prefer to buy tank bread, tank bread fish, just let just yeah, clarify that one for me. Is that what you mean by that question? I'm not sure, sorry. <laughs> hey Dan. I know it is very okay, so is it 1030 in Melbourne? Because I know in Sydney it's two hours, two hours ahead. You guys must be an hour and a half, maybe either that. Yeah, I think. I <laughs> know we just have to be different, WA, don't we? It's very, very. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to trying to make sure I don't miss anyone's comments. So, just bear with me. <laughs> fun fact. Okay, fun fact. Father's Day is number. 18 on the most celebrated day list and Mother's Day is number two right under Christmas. Is that, uh, is that an actual fact? Well, I think they should be on par, Mel. I think that's, that's very sad and I hope, that's, I hope that's not true. But, yeah, I think it should just be equally as celebrated as Mother's Day. So I hope that's not true. <laughs> I hope you're getting spoiled, Mel. Yeah, so, yeah, the canister filters are going awesome. Really happy with them. Let me just, I think I'm a little bit behind, so sorry about that. Um, Bangai Cardinals, getting very expensive. Yes, I know. And I, I wanted them ages ago for this tank and then I couldn't, I couldn't seem to find them anywhere um, to buy and... Um, yeah, then ended up finding somewhere that had them tank bred um, up in Perth. So luckily just got them. So fingers crossed, I do have a pair. That would be really, really cool if I could end up breeding them. Um, I'd absolutely love that, um, especially since they're, you know, um, I think they're coming to extin extinction in the wild, I think, or they're very, very rare in the wild. So I think that'd be really, really cool to be able to breed them. So definitely. Um but, yeah, they were like $50 each or something, which they didn't used to be that um, expensive. Sneak some Bangai babies on the plate. Yes, if I get Bangai babies by then, I'll bring you some. <laughs> um, but, yes, to answer the next question, I am going to go to reef stock this year. So it's my first ever time going to one of those reefing shows. Um, so really excited about that. So um, I will be going this year. Um, I have no idea really what to expect. I've seen all the US ones and they look absolutely epic. So <laughs> I don't know what this one's going to be like, but um, yes, I'll be going. I'm very excited. It's going to be lots of fun. Leaders per hour, that's right. I don't know what I said. Did I say gallons per hour or something silly like that? <laughs> Probably did. <laughs> uh. 11, 10, 11, 10. Oh, okay. So you guys are the same as Sydney. Yeah, same as, yeah. And 10.30 in Port Lincoln. Oh, my gosh. Is that near, is that near Melbourne? I'm actually not sure where Port, Port Lincoln is, but we have some weird time zones in Australia, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. Let's have a look. So breeding fish is a big for them. Ah, oh. okay. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying that. Um, we do have a few tank bred fish. Um, I know there's a lot of places that are um, 
you know, trying to go more towards the uh, sustainable side of things. Um, but I, th I feel like it's something that's, um, you know, growing a little bit more in Australia. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I know there's lots of places trying to breed, you know, Vanguard Cardinals, for example, and stuff like that. So um, I think definitely got, trying to go more towards the sustain things as sustainable as possible. So, um, but I wouldn't know how we go compared to other countries, unfortunately. I'm not sure. Um, but I know there is, you know, a lot of work to go towards being sustainable. So, Jean, it is 10, 11, are in Brazil, awesome. Oh, no. So it is, it is true. That's a bit sad about Father's Day. <laughs> I think that's a shame. I think that's a shame about Father's Day. I don't think it should be that way. It's 6.58. Is that a.m. in Nepal? A.m., I'm guessing. Here we go, Taylor. <laughs> Yeah, so lots of Aussies breeding designer clowns and mandarins. I actually saw that the other day. Where did I see that? Someone breeding or someone's mandarins wanting to breed, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, not as many as we should, but I think we're definitely on our way to, um, you know, trying to become more sustainable with that sort of thing. So, yeah. Oh, is that Port Lincoln? Is that what we were talking about? Port Lincoln must be, oh, okay, <laughs> that's my mind. I honestly, my, I don't know, I'm, my no, knowledge of where things are is um, shocking. Like my directional, <laughs> any sort of directions just gone with me, gone. <laughs> like if I'm driving, I'm one of those people that um, like, in Perth, when I when I lived in Perth, there's this one main um, anyone that's here that's listing that's from from Perth or knows of South Street. I could just drive in a straight line, like I'll just or follow the car in front of me. Like I'll just get carried away in the car and just keep driving straight, and then I'll get to Fremantle. <laughs> Be like, oh dang it, I was meant to take a turn off. So yeah, terrible at directions. So yep. Very, yeah. Does Cairns Marine have a breeding program? I actually don't know about that. There's a few around Australia that have different breeding programs and stuff like that, but it's, it's good to, yeah, I absolutely love hearing about people, um, you know, trying to figure out how we can breed them ourselves and especially hearing about Bango Cardinals in the wild. It would be so, so cool. And, you know, with SBS and everything, um, you know, and the natural coral reefs and you hear them struggling. It would be so cool for, you know, us as, you know, animal, uh, well, aquarium lovers to be able to breed and propagate them and um, help build up. You know, you've got the coral farms out in the oceans now and I think that's awesome if we can, you know, build our knowledge to help give back to the oceans and stuff. I think that's awesome. Um, if we can in some way, that's, I'm all for that. That's awesome. Okay. So the lowest point in South Australia, that's like the lowest point in Western Australia where I am. <laughs> that's like, yeah, away from everyone. That's, that's me. <laughs> that's, that's down in Albany, Western Australia. That We're like the, I'm not sure if we're the lowest point of WA, but it feels, I think we're pretty close. Um, there might be, you know, someplace a little bit lower, but we're pretty much, yeah, the, the equivalent of that in WA over here. So makes it a bit difficult with, um, you know, fish stores and stuff. I don't know. We feel very far away from anything half decent, which is all up in Perth. <laughs> let me just... Uh, okay, let me just see where I'm up to. I don't know how far behind I am, so I apologise if I'm really far behind. Someone just seen a tank bred dotty back at Bespoke Aquariums in Blacktown. 
Sydney. That's interesting. I absolutely love that. That is becoming more of a common thing now. I think that's awesome. Oh, okay. Let me just, sorry, I'm just reading there. Okay. So it sounds like there's lots of different breeding programs. One that Coralfish 12G, is that, is that the one in Cairns you guys are talking about? That's awesome. Here in the Netherlands, most people go for cheaper fish, but cheers to you for looking for tank bread fish. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's – and sometimes it can be a bit tricky to know um, unless they really – I mean, I'm sure if they are tank bred that they will definitely advertise that. Um, it's definitely something that you'd want to advertise, I reckon. So, um, but yeah, it can be tricky if you go into an LFS and you're not sure what is tank bred, what's not. Um yeah, but, um, yeah, no, that's awesome to hear that they're doing that overseas and, um, yeah, that's awesome. What should, what should I use to cover my wave pump for my seahorses? So um, I've bought um, wave makers before that didn't have uh, specific wave pump covers made for them. So what I've done... Um, with some of my um, wave makers is, I don't know if you can get this overseas, but in Australia, if you buy onions or, you know, I think it's onions or garlic or something like that, like fresh garlic, um, the bag that it comes in, um, let me know if this actually is a thing overseas or if this is just an Australian thing, but um, it's like a, it's almost like a plastic meshy type bag that's, um, what's the word, um, stretchy. It's super stretchy. So um, I've actually used one of those bags and, um, you know, zip tied it over the top of my wave makers. Um, I don't know. Seahorses are tricky though because they're little tails. I've done that to stop my anemones from getting um, chopped up in my wave makers. So I don't know about seahorses if you have to be extra careful because of their tiny little tails, um, but that's something that I've done with one of my wave pumps. So I don't know if that helps at all. I'm not, I'm not super <laughs> um, knowledgeable on you know keeping seahorses. I'd absolutely love to one day, but yeah, I'm not 100% sure on that one. Sorry. Um, thank you. Yes. Fingers crossed I can get those bangas to breed. That would be absolutely awesome. All right, let me just. <laughs> Back to my bad directional. Look, honestly, it's all just a bad time. <laughs> With the map and everything, it's just, just a bad time, especially when, like, the... The nav ma nav man is that what they call them nowadays? <laughs> when the I don't know Google Maps Google Maps is uh, delayed, that's just shocking. So honestly, it's just a bad time driving with me when I'm directing because I will be so confident that I've got the directions right, and it's just not right. So um, yeah, it's all a bad time. Um, let me just. Okay, so Port Lincoln's about the same height as Albany. Always cold and windy. Yep, sounds like Albany. <laughs> yep, and yeah, have to buy everything online. Actually, my um, my local lo local fish shop down here, um, they they had um, a collection of um, corals that were pretty much all dead, and they've still got them there in the window for sale. But um, they've just put up a sign saying that they're not selling um, saltwater fish or corals anymore, probably because, yeah, they just weren't selling. So um, we officially in Albany cannot get any fish or corals. Um, sometimes I used to buy off them and just go and make sure I picked it up straight away. Um, as soon as it came in, I'd say, give me a call and I'll get them there. Before you go and put them in your tanks, I'll come and pick them up straight away. But, yeah, don't even have them here. So the closest is about, yeah, four hours away now. 
four and a half hour drive. So, or I get them flown or shipped down to me. So, yeah, it's a bit of a shame, but that's all right. Any plans for another project? I've always got lots of, lots of, um, I think it's a matter of space and, um, yeah, trying to find room where I could put more tanks really. But um, probably the next big thing for um, my plans would be I've got my koi fish pond out the front, so I'm going to be upgrading that in the next few months. So that's probably going to be my next big project. Um, yeah, and then I don't know. I would absolutely love to get a cichlid tank as well one day. Um, I'd love to get discus back another day. Um yeah, lots, lots of plans, but it's just finding the room like, yeah, maybe I could get rid of the dining table. We don't, who needs a dining table anyway? <laughs> I don't know. Um, plotting, it's all plotting, plotting, but um, definite one that's coming up is my koi pond. So, um, which, yeah, they are all going really well, by the way, by the way, my little koi. Um, they've actually grown quite a bit, which is awesome. I mean, only a little bit more, but um it's exciting to watch them grow and get a bit more confident with me being around the tank uh, around the pond and everything and um so yeah absolutely can't wait to see them grow up and yeah so they're doing really well got a bit of hair algae happening in the pond but I just I really try not to use chemicals too much in any of my tanks and if I can try and do manual removal as much as possible I try I prefer to do that um but, yeah, they're, they're doing really well and they're growing up so fast. So, yeah. Okay, let me just, when you buy online, is that one to me? I'm, I don't know, but I'll answer that. If I buy online, the two places that I've bought, bought from online is Aquarium Gallery in Perth and I've also bought from Ocean Reef a few years ago. So, um, they're the two places that I've ever bought online, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, and, yeah, had positive experiences with both. So, yeah. Um, do I have... I do have freshwater stuff. So I've got, um, I've got a guppy tank, which... I'm kind of working on it at the moment. I've got a little guppy pot pond as well. Um, and I've also just got some Harley Quinn Tetras and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, going to be doing a little bit more freshwater stuff coming up. Um, but, yeah, definitely still got my freshwater. Um, and, yeah, as I said, I'd love to get into cichlids because um, that's actually not something I've really – I don't think I've ever really gotten into cichlids. But, um, yeah, oh, well. I've had my discus and um, stuff like that. So, yeah, still got fresh. I've got two freshwater tanks inside. One's just a really small one. And, um, yeah, so definitely going to be doing some more freshwater stuff coming up. Um, yeah, and still got my salt, obviously. So, yes. Um, let me just catch up. Any hobbies outside of outside of this hobby? Well, I um, growing up, I did a little bit of dance. Well, I danced up until my teens, so I've recently just gotten back into doing dancing. Um, and because yeah, uh, both my kids do dance, and so I I asked them, you know, what's a what's a class that I could do. <laughs> Um, and they said, oh, there's this one from year 12 up. And so I was like, oh, yeah, I'll do that. And they're like, yeah, adults can 100% do it as well. So um, I decided to go and I feel very, very old <laughs> with all these, um, yeah, girls in year 12 and stuff like that, year 11 and year 12. And, uh, yeah, so that's been, you know, throwing myself way out of my comfort zone because it's been like, I don't know. 14, 15 years or something since I last danced. So, but it's been good fun. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. But yeah, I remember one of the first classes, I think it was the second week actually, and the teacher goes, Oh, we'll, you know, get you to line up from, yeah, line up from youngest to oldest. And this young girl, she'd never spoken to me. She just turns around, and she goes, That's you. And I was like, Okay. 
<laughs> nice, thank you. So, uh, yeah, um, but that's okay. I um, Yeah, so outside of this hobby that I guess could be one of my hobbies, I used to do um, singing and play guitar and stuff like that. I haven't played guitar in a very, very long time. Um, but, yeah, so outside of this hobby that was my main sort of things I can't think of anything else I actually used to love fishing um growing up so my granddad used to take us fishing all the time when we were kids and um I like I think that's why I love this hobby so much because when I was when I used to go fishing um and stuff like that that's one time and one thing that I could do where I would just not think about anything like it was super relaxing and, um, yeah, I could sit there for hours fishing and just completely zone out and, um, yeah, I absolutely loved it. And I get that same feeling when, you know, I'm watching my tanks and stuff like that. So I think that's why I'm a little bit obsessed with this hobby because it's something that, like, if I'm maintaining my tanks or watching my tanks or anything like that, I just completely zone out and just get into that zone where I'm not thinking or, yeah, so... That's, but I don't know, now that I've got big fish, <laughs> like now that I've got big fish that um, like big tangs and stuff like that, I don't think I can bring myself to go fishing anymore. <laughs> not, I'm not vegetarian, like vegetarian or vegan or anything like that. I just, I don't know. I don't know if I can bring myself to do it anymore. Just the killing part of it. <laughs> I just don't know if I can do it myself personally. I'll still... I know it's very backwards. I still eat fish and stuff like that, but fishing itself, I just, I've got my aquariums now, so I'm happy with that. But those, they were my main hobbies. <laughs> um, how long have I been in the fish hobby? I have always had fish pretty much. I've got, I got my first three goldfish when I was about three years old. So always, always, always had fish and, um, yeah, in any way, shape or form throughout my life. Um, I've got lots of fond memories um, <laughs> going to school with my goldfish, my poor goldfish in the, one of those old um, plastic, um, you know, with the fluoro lid uh, tanks, <laughs> going to school with for show and tell with my goldfish. Um, many school trips. I've got many fond memories doing that as a kid. So, um, yeah, always been in the hobby um so yeah uh let me just catch up here hey ryan thanks for joining Kad kadena south australia i don't know where that is kadena i'm not sure where that is hello majestic Cith majestic cichlids thanks for joining um, let me just catch up. Sorry, I think I might be a little bit behind. Let me just read through here and I hope I don't miss anyone's comments. So please let me know if I'm missing anyone's comments. Dan's wanting to try and breed wild clowns one day. Yeah, see, I, um, for those of you who don't know, I actually started out with discus in the six foot tank and then I ended up getting, um, I think it must have been a two or three foot tank and starting out with uh, saltwater fish. And then, um, yeah, I ended up wanting to sell the discus to make the six foot into a big reef tank, which is what I did. So, um, but now that I, now that I've sold my discus and I still follow heaps of people that I followed back in the day, that still have discus and I see all their beautiful photos and videos. I'm like, I want to get discus again. I, yeah. So um, who knows? I'll probably end up with discus again in the future. <clears throat> he is very supportive about all the tanks. So that's great. Um, and yeah, puts up with, you know, my very messy water changes and, <laughs> which are a lot less messier now that I've got my um, pump. I know a lot of people have been telling me that I've, you know, been doing it the hard way for a very long time. So, um, but, yeah, he's very good about all the tanks. That's good. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. 
it, we've got, we don't have a huge house, honestly. <laughs> so um, I'm always looking for little like subtle ways that I could add another tank. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> he's actually very supportive of it, which is, which is, which is yeah, lucky. <laughs> All right, let me just. Oh, this is with the cichlid, uh, cichlids, Bolivian rams and blue German rams. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Don't have to ask me twice to look into more fish. Definitely, I'll look into that. Absolutely. Dear happy Sunday. And for those of you who've just joined, um, for any of the dads out there, it's not Father's Day in Australia, but it is elsewhere, as I've discovered. So happy, happy Father's Day to all of the dads. Dress the legend. Hello from Europe. Economical Reefer. Hey from London. Thank you for joining. Let me just catch up here. Sorry. <laughs> all right, James. Have you got any good tips for my tank he's new to the tank not long ago he seems to not eat okay but he eats it if it's crushed up see so you eat it and putting it in the tank for it I reckon just keep doing it crushed up um yeah I would just keep crushing it up until he gets a little bit more confident it is a new tank um so, yeah, I just, yeah, keep crushing it up and making sure that any food that goes into the tank, you know, gets to him. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of all I did with my tangs at the beginning when they're a little bit, you know, gaining confidence to actually go up and eat seaweed on a clip with all the rest of the tangs. So I would just, yeah, keep putting some crushed in bits so that he can definitely eat um, and feel comfortable to eat without having to compete with the other tangs or try and do like a couple of clips, like one on one end of the tank and one on the other end of the tank that might help maybe. Um, but yeah, could give that a go. The kids, my daughter is very interested in the hobby. Um, like it's, it's a bad time because I love all animals. If we go to the pet shop and she loves all animals, She'll be like, oh, I really want to get this bunny, like this rabbit. And I'll be like, same. <laughs> like, it's just, honestly, we can't, like, we need supervision. Like, we can't be left alone going to places like that because it's like, and just, I don't know if anyone else has got kids that's into the same hobby as you, but when they're like, oh, I want that. And you're like, same. I want that too. And yeah. And then she gets into, yeah, loves all the little baby fish. And yeah, so I'm in a lot of trouble because she's already, you know, wanting her own tanks and stuff like that, wants her own fish in her room. And so, yeah, but I absolutely love it. Like girl after my own heart, hundred percent. So yeah, it's, yeah, I love it. Um, let me just try and I actually have no idea how far behind I am. Oh, I'm not too far behind. That's good. <laughs> Sorry. Just uh, double check that. Cool. Um, let me just double check where we're up to. Yeah. Let me just see here. That's how I just, okay. Ah, so you were the same. Yeah, honestly. And Upper Aquarium Gallery up in Perth, they've got this gorgeous discus display and every time I see it, I'm like, oh, my God, I really want to get back into having discus again. But, yeah, then that's another big tank. So <laughs> before we know it, I'm going to have a full-on fish room. It's going to happen. <laughs> and, you know, one day when we buy our own house, I'd love to – have a huge koi pond as well. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. But, um, yeah, it escalates very quickly, especially the saltwater hobby, I feel. <laughs> so he's got a um, silver belly wrasse, two clowns. 
okay. As long as he's eating, I think, and if you're crushing it up and he's able to get to the food, I think that's the main thing. So that's it's good that he's, he's eating at least, so that's good. <laughs> Mikey Mike Buck is back. <laughs> And yes, I'm going to restock. Are you going to restock, Mikey? Mike? <laughs> we need you to come to restock. <laughs> it's going to be, I don't know, it's going to be lots of fun. I'm going to have lots of fun because I've never been to any of those shows before and I totally want to get over to some of the US shows one day. That would be absolutely epic. I'd absolutely love that. So, um, but yes, are you going to restock? Is anyone else in the comment section going to be going to restock? That's going to be lots and lots of fun yes thanks for joining dan it is very late over there i'm sorry about that for you guys over east it's not a great time you escaped that which display? You escaped that display. I don't know what you're talking about. That. Oh, the. Okay. That is very cool. I didn't know that, Mikey. The aquarium gallery one. That is very cool. It's absolutely gorgeous. And if anyone, I think aquarium gallery actually have their own YouTube channel now, and you can see, um, yeah, how flipping gorgeous it is. So, um. You can go and check out their YouTube channel, but it has the discus display on there and it's insane. Like if anyone thinks their local fish shop is nice, like this is just next level. It's just gorgeous. Like it's a little boutique. It's honestly, it's a boutique fish shop, fish shop and it's got like a little table that you can go there and measure out your tank. Um, so, you know, and you've got rock and wood that you can play around with to get it to the right size um, for your tank. It's absolutely epic. So love it. Um, what was that? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Hello, Tolga. Thanks for joining. Yes, Mikey, we need to drag you in to come and do some uh, escaping videos. It, honestly, anyone that doesn't know Mikey Mike Mike um, is an awesome aquascaper so definitely go and check out his content he's got a lot of knowledge there so um, and that is a shame that you're not going to reef stock <laughs> but exciting that you're going overseas it's very nice to be able to go back overseas um, and do all of that now so but I am just trying to see what else I've been up to um, I have apart from draining all the oceans of all its water um, volume. So um, I'm trying to think what else has been. I think you guys, well, we pretty much covered everything that I was going to cover. Um, yes. Yeah, I think I pretty much covered it all. I think I was going to see, well, I know it's Father's Day over in other parts of the world, so I wasn't sure how long I was going to jump on for this live for but thank you very much for everyone for joining thank you Mat Matthias Mat Matthias I'm not sure how to say that from Germany thanks for joining but yeah um if you've got any further questions let me know in the comment section um but yeah it's it's um yeah interesting back to uh yeah draining all the oceans of its water um yeah I get a lot of questions on using natural seawater for the tank. Um, yeah, and people very sceptical that I am. I, I, Someone said I think we should be thanked, like, that <laughs> you know, fighting rising sea levels by taking seawater. So I, I like to think of it that way anyway. Um, but, yeah, so it's I haven't had – I'm actually not – I'm not sure how many months now I've been using natural seawater on the six foot tank, but it's going really, really well. So um, haven't had any issues with it. And I always make sure that um, I collect the water, um, after, you know, 
I don't collect it directly after it's been raining heaps or anything like that. So, um, yeah, that had no issue whatsoever there. So, um, no, it's been awesome. That's exactly right. Have <laughs> Maintain the sea levels one bucket at a time. That's exactly right. <laughs> so... That's exactly right. I think someone said um, something about islands, like some some of the smaller islands would be thanking us because they might end up being covered over with water if it wasn't for us <laughs> collecting our 80 litres of water a week. So, um, but yeah, it's been it's been great. But I might start to wind wind it up. Thank you for those that have just joined. Thanks for thanks for jumping on and saying hi. Hello from Florida. How are you going? Thanks for joining. Florida spiders. I wonder what sort of spiders you get over in Florida compared to what we have here in Australia. But anyways, thank you everyone for joining tonight. Um, I might make it a bit of a shorter one today um, just because I know it is Father's Day over in other parts of the world. And I hope all of you fathers out there have an amazing, amazing Father's Day. Get super spoilt. Um, breakfast in bed, the lot. <laughs> so, yeah. But thank you, everyone, for jumping on and saying hi. Um, yeah, I'm very excited for uh, my Koi Pond upgrade. So that, that video should be coming soon. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much everyone for joining and we will catch you all next time but thank you for jumping on and having a chat i will go ahead and end the stream now but we will catch you guys later see you later mikey mike mike see you remy have a great day tarantulas <laughs> awesome thanks guys for joining i will end the stream now thanks for joining guys